Come From Behind victories are both exciting, enticing. They show you what your team is really about when the chips are down and also incredibly frustrating. But as we come to the end of the season, the Orlando Magic are taking on a really important personality. The personality of their coach. Some praise for Jamal Mosley coming up on today's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 1st, 2023. My name is Philip Ross Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Just follow me on Twitter at Philip R-R underscore O-M-D. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic come from behind to defeat the Washington Wizards. A really, really nice win, an important win. A win that shows us exactly what this team, and more importantly, what their coach is about. How the Orlando Magic have taken on the, po- the personality of their coach in the right ways, in many ways, We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, whether it's on the way to the game on Sunday. We want to thank you again for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Lockdown podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Lockdown and the team you're looking for, the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. If you want to know the temperature of a team, if you want to know the temperament of a team, if you want to know how a team's going to react and how a team's going to perform, look to the bench. Look to their coach. See how their coach is reacting. How their coach is kind of fixated on the game. When they're down, when they're up, what is that coach's demeanor? Now, the Orlando Magic are a really young team and prone to wild swings. And then certainly Friday's game, a 116-109 win over the Washington Wizards, was prone to those wild swings. And that's why it's so important right now to have a coach that stays very level, that can reel the team back in, that can calm them down, that can instruct and teach and do all the things that a young team needs to, to give them some space to make mistakes and grow from them. As frustrating as parts of this season have been, and and and, and you know Jamal Mosley has been a constant conversation among Magic fans this year. As frustrating as this season has been at times, this is a team that has slowly that, that has bought in first to what Jamal Mosley's preaching, but has slowly taken on something of the demeanor of their head coach. Has taken on this attitude of composure, this quiet intensity, this willingness to learn, to give space to learn, but this also willingness to to make subtle changes that'll get the team in the right spot. I'm not here to say that Jamal Mosley's been perfect this year. I've, I've certainly been on here and noted some things that I might have done differently that I think could, I I think a lot of times, and and even in, in Friday's game, Maybe just went a tick too long with some things. Some initial ideas didn't quite work out. And with how small the Magic's margins are, those are huge things. But at the end of the day, when we take a look back, when we look back at the season now with 33 wins, all we could say is, wow, he's done a really good job. He's put this team in position to be in the postseason race entering the last week of the season. And then we are now, you know, as of Sunday, we'll be in the last full week of the season. And the Magic will technically still be alive for a postseason spot. They're they're long, long shot, but technically still alive. And that's a credit to how Jamal Mosley has kept a, a view of the bigger picture in play. And that's allowed him to take a step back from the heat of the moment in every game to keep his cool, to to help his players keep their cool, to keep their calm, to keep their poise, and eventually develop into the team that they are quickly becoming. Friday's game was frustrating as all hell. 
the Magic were playing against a team down its top three scores and Bradley Beal, Kristaps Porzingis, and Kyle Kuzma. They absolutely needed this win for all the standings reasons you can think of. Minus lottery standings reasons. And it felt like a game the Magic should dominate. Instead, Orlando came out really flat. Outside of Paolo Bancaro and Markel Fultz, really in the first three quarters, the Magic really struggled to keep pace. The Magic were beat to every 50-50 ball. They were beat to loot to rebounds. They were beat everywhere on the floor, except for Paolo's ability to get downhill to the paint, except for Markel's ability to get down to, into the paint. They just weren't able to build momentum, build themselves up. The Magic found themselves down by 10. They'd reel it back in to like 4 or 5, and then Washington would get it back out to 10. The Magic rallied and worked really hard to get down by 3 at the half. Then coming out of halftime again, yes, this is a this is a criticism of the coach for not having his team ready to go. Washington burns off a 13-0 run, and the Magic down by 16 and looking really, really bad. But Jamal Mosey's always on the sideline teaching. He's always on the sideline instructing his team and, and being that composed voice of reason. And it's hard not to believe that that doesn't bleed out to his team. On top of this, Mosley made some really good tactical changes. First, he dumped the big, he dumped the all big lineup. Washington was only playing with one big with Daniel Gafford uh, and and were be, and were just quicker than the Magic. So he dumped that all big lineup, stuck with Goga Batadze, and Batadze delivered with two block shots in the fourth quarter. He then also in the fourth quarter switched to a 2-3 zone, which threw Washington off just enough disrupted their rhythm just enough, focused the Magic defensively just enough. And Orlando was able to erase that deficit, holding Washington to 31 points, scoring 31 themselves, and putting the game away for a 116-109 victory. Again, so much of this is about your ability to stay calm under pressure. Your ability to take hits, to take runs, and answer back. To stay within yourself and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. The Magic struggled early in the game because they let Washington control the pace. There were so many times in the first three quarters of the game, I just wanted the Magic to slow it down. Yes, they're a faster paced team, but with the way the Wizards were playing, with the way that they had so much so much more speed on the floor because of their lack of size, and because they knew they had to up their effort to make up for the talent deficit, and yeah, that's a weird thing to say with the Magic sometimes, um, they had to make up this talent deficit. The Magic needed to play with more composure. But, you know, that, that's that been the thing about Jamal Mosley all year. I would agree he needs to challenge more play, you know, use his challenge more frequently. I agree that there are times he needs to show more fire to, to spark his team because he is the emotional center of this team. You know, Cole Anthony Markel Fultz might be the emotional center on the court. Jamal Mosley is the face of this team off of it. But at the same time, and this is something Mosley has done so well all year, individual games aren't as important as the bigger picture. Because after all, the motto of the season, this year ain't about this year. This year is about laying the foundation and building to what this team's going to become in the future. And one thing that Jamal Mosley has been really good at in both seasons that he's been in Orlando is keeping that bigger picture in mind. Understanding the way this team's going to need to play and should play when they're fully realized and preparing the team for the decisions that they're going to have to make when they're, when they're that team. To give a young player, especially in a season like this, the freedom to make some mistakes and the ability to calmly put his arm around a player, talk things through, and send him back out there to try again, to do better the next time. And yes, this may have cost the Magic some moments. This may have meant a bench lineup stays in a little too long. But ultimately, it helps the team grow. It helps the team get better for when the games do matter, when individual games are significantly more important. And and it's coming. We're we're kind of simulating it right now, but it's coming. And it's a huge test for Jamal Mosley to be able to 
turn that switch. You know, the Magic have been so developmentally focused for so long now, and they've done a great job at it. Now they got to start focusing on winning and, and making winning plays and building a winning roster. We're at that point. And so a lot of this is going to have to change and adjust and shift and move. But for all the criticism that Jamal Mosley has taken from fans, and, and again, it, a lot of it's fair. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're completely wrong. I think people who think he should be fired are way off base because he's done a fantastic job. Looking at Mosley, looking the way that he coaches with intensity but level-headedness, it's the reason why the Magic are able to fight back the way they have. It's the reason why they've been so resilient. It's the reason why they're able to find their calm, their coolness, and collect themselves in such a meaningful way. This Magic team has been a fun one. We're not done yet, but it's been a fun one. And it's games like this that show us what their potential is and, yes, how much more work they have to do. But it shows us that we have a coach that's not going to panic at the first sign of trouble. That's going to keep us calm and give his team the chance to breathe and the chance to find themselves to win these kinds of games. We're going to go through the box scores. Your line to Magic defeat. The Washington Wizards 116-109. to We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends at FanDuel. The NCAA Tournament Final Four is tonight. San Diego State, Florida Atlantic, Miami, UConn. There's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And don't forget, Sunday, Iowa versus LSU for the Women's National Championship should be an absolutely great game. If you haven't watched Caitlin Clark yet, please, 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 please do so Sunday. She is awesome. And right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. As we do after every game, let's run through the final box scores. The Orlando Magic defeat the Washington Wizards 116 to 109. I wanted to focus on, on, on a bigger picture item. You know, we're at the end of the season. I'm getting contemplative about what this season means and, and kind of the big lessons. And so, you know, the, the, the thought I had about Mosley is certainly one that that I've that I believe for a while and certainly I think played out in this game. But look, you can coach as well as you want. You can be as strong of a coach. You can have all the right principles. You can have all the right ideas. But it doesn't matter if your players don't execute. And really, that was a big part of the story of this game. In the first three quarters, the Magic really didn't execute. They allowed Washington, again, to control the pace, get up and down really, really fast. Their defense just looked lost. They just did not look super engaged defensively. And again, it's a lot. No excuses for it being a long season, but it's been a long season. And, 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 you know, I think as much as the team wants to be fighting for the postseason, fighting for a playing spot, I think they could definitely sense how remote those ideas are at times. And, 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 and you know, that's, that's something you got to fight off at this stage of the season. But credit to the Magic, they still fought hard. They still got themselves back into this game, and they, they still did some really good things. And obviously, you know, we've gone now thir- almost 14 minutes, and I haven't mentioned Paolo Bancaro. And, 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 and to the point that I made earlier about composure— it's really good to have a, a, a player like Paolo Bancaro who plays at his own pace, doesn't doesn't get doesn't get rattled very easily, um, makes mistakes because he's a rookie, but doesn't get rattled. And Markel Fultz, who also doesn't get rattled very easily, and they were both key components of the Magic staying in this game and giving themselves a real shot to win it. Paolo Bancaro d- just simply was fantastic. Thirty points, eight for seventeen shooting, thirteen for fourteen from the free throw line, fourteen in the Magic's twenty six free throw attempts in the game. 12 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 block shots. He was, you know, I would say defensively he wasn't as engaged as he needed to be at times. I know he had the block shots. Um, He was a little bit late on a lot of rotations, um, you know, but overall great on the glass and offensively just getting downhill and just playing with a ton of confidence. And when he's confident and he has that shot, he is near unstoppable. And and look, he, he had a couple heat check shots that you could definitely say were not good shots, but He'd earned the right to take him because he was really feeling it. And 
just getting downhill without Kristaps Porzingis out there. He had free reign in the paint and he took it. Um, he was he was really really impressive, and, and I think you could. And Orlando outscores Washington fifty eight forty two in the paint. I think you can really sense that he is making a closing argument to the voters for rookie of the year. The Magic are certainly pushing it, pushing it. You know, people are kind of making fun of the Magic a little bit for the tweet thread that they put out about Paolo, but the timing of that is important because uh, ballots were sent out Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Ballots for uh, for the for the award voting were sent out to the vote to the voting panel on Friday. They have until next Monday, I believe, to vote. I believe everything's due at the end of the regular season. Um, so this is the voting period. Um, so I, I think I think the timing makes a little bit more sense when viewed in that context. Um, he's been he's the rookie of the year. He should be unanimous. No offense to Jalen Williams. No offense to anyone else. Games like this really prove it. Where he just he just took over and really carried his team for a long stretch of time. So did Markel Fultz. Twenty five points, eleven for fifteen shooting, two for two from deep, six rebounds, four assists. Same deal. Just very aggressive, getting downhill, getting to the basket kind of making things happen for his team. Um, you know, you love these kinds of games for Markel when he has them uh, because he is just so, so good. Really, though, the bench was the group that that saved this game for the Magic and it helped them uh, helped them get out of the hole. Franz Wagner was a big part of that. 20 points, 8 for 14, shooting 2 for 3 from deep, 5 rebounds. You know, if you haven't read Kobe Price's article on this rebounding, please do so. Um, he had 11 of those 20 points in the fourth quarter, was plus 18 in the fourth quarter, uh, playing the entire fourth quarter. Um, he was... You know, he struggled a little bit with the shots around the rim throughout the game. Just, you know, shots that he can make. The Magic missed a lot of bunnies. So, like, I think one of the reasons why it felt like the Magic could still come back is the Magic shot quality was never bad. Their defense was awful, but their shot quality was never bad. They just couldn't get shots to go down, and Washington was able to kind of run it on them. Um, the Wizards finished with 19 fast break points to the Magic's 8. Orlando just won for 7 on fast break points. So that, that tells you a little bit about how the game was kind of flowing. Um, but Wagner got going and got cooking in that fourth quarter. Started hitting his jumpers, made a couple of threes, really p- helped put this game away and helped the Magic get back into it. Obviously, so did Cole Anthony. 16 points, 7 for 11 shooting, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. Just Cole Anthony just all over the place. Loved his rebounding, of course. He's, he's such a strong rebounder for a player of size. Um, really owned the glass in, in a lot of spaces and, and really just he fights so hard for rebounds. And, and, and you know, that's something that I don't think we talk about it. We don't talk about it enough about how he his rebounding is really valuable to this team. And now that he's scoring much more efficiently, more effectively, he's you know he picks his spots really well. He understands when to pull up, when to hit, when to shoot for three. He he understands his game a lot better and is playing it at its peak right now. Um, just he's had a great season, had a great game, and was such a catalyst for this team. Jalen Suggs a solid eight points, four for six from the foul line, two for six from the floor. Doga Batadze a really nice game. Two points, only two points, but two block shots. Those were huge, just a great defensive presence in the middle. Made some made, made some great decisions, made a great pass in the second quarter, Mo Wagner for a dunk. Um, so he just he just kind of fits in really well. And you know, when the Magic need defense, they go with him. When they need offense, they go with Mo. And, and you know, it's kind of that simple. Um, the issue for the Magic was they just had a lot of guys who kind of no-showed this game. Um, Wendell Carter had one of his worst games of the season, 11 points, 5 for 11 shooting, 1 for 5 from deep, just 7 rebounds. Just got beat everywhere on the floor. Uh, I did not like him settling for jumpers the way that he did. Uh, when you shooting, if you're shooting two, three for five from three, that's fine. But if you're shooting one for five from three, you need to shoot fewer threes. Um, it, you know, I think he made better decisions in the fourth quarter, but really just a, a difficult game for him, or just didn't seem like he was completely locked into what the team needed him to do. And, and Gary Harris with a, a very odd goose egg: zero points, zero for six shooting, zero for three from three. Um, I, I am a big Gary Harris supporter. I won't hide that, but um, definitely definitely a game where he needed, where, where the Magic needed a little bit more from him. And again, just not able to, to get things going. Washington made so many threes. Corey Kispert, 27 points, 9 for 14 shooting from deep. He had eight three-pointers. His eight three-pointer put the Wizards up by 16. So cutting him off from the three-point line was huge. It's worth it just to go through the first, th- first three-quarter box score. Orlando was shooting 47.9% from floor in the first three quarters, 6 for 19 from three. Washington shooting 43.9%, the 10 offensive rebounds, 16 for 39 from three. Just just a huge disparity there that the Magic couldn't make up. And then they made it up. Fourth quarter, Orlando outscores Washington 31-13. They make 9 of 15 shots, 11 for 14 from the foul line, 2 for 5 from three. Their defense gives up only 21.7% shooting, 5 for 23, and only one three-pointer in 11 attempts. 
The Wizards lived by that three-point line, and eventually the Magic cut them off from it, and they died by that three-point line with 11 of those 23 attempts in the fourth quarter coming from the three-point line. Orlando forcing six turnovers in that zone defense, really just kind of confounding Washington uh, and doing a great job getting themselves back in the game. The Orlando Magic defeat the Washington Wizards 116-109. to They're back in action Sunday at the Amway Center. Final three-game homestand of the season. They get the Pistons on Sunday and then the Cavs on Tuesday and Thursday. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in to Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of our personal podcasts to your podcast and able listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Hope everyone has a great Final Four weekend, a great National Championship weekend. We'll be back Sunday to talk about the Magic's game against the Detroit Pistons. So we'll see you on Monday for that episode. Until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman. Mike, we'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.